All right. Thanks. Thanks for sticking with us, everyone, as we, we make our way through this, this show today. We're here in the final segment, and we're going to talk a little bit about what to do when you've got a little bit of that balance still remaining on your college bills. And uh, joining me to help talk us through that is Lori Peltier. Hey, Lori, how's it going? I'm good, Ian. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing a lot better than I think I would be if I had a college <laughs> bill and there was some balance remaining. That is some scary scary stuff to think about. Now, um, sometimes we'll see these segments from finance and, and you all as a team get together and think about what are some, some topics that people will be especially interested in learning about at a given point in the year. Um, re- remaining balance on college bills coming up here in September. How is this something that uh, families are, are sort of engaging with and encountering uh, with their, their college bound students? Well, believe it or not, it does happen pretty frequently. I remember in the old days when I was on a college campus, we would always have one or two families who was scrambling. You know, they're moving in and in the excitement of moving in, they kind of just ignored or missed or, you know, did some bad math and they thought they were all set and they were not. Um, And one of the reasons is that all the communication, and I'm sure we've talked about this a million times, the communication from the college goes to the student. So the student's Uh, getting the bill, the student's getting. (laughs) So he's like, yes, mom and dad, everything's fine. I don't have any emails from the college. And lo and behold, there, there's a balance due. But I think the two important things is uh, one would be the college doesn't want to lose you at this point. They're not going to send you home. Most of the time, you know, they've put a lot of time and effort into recruiting you, getting you through the admission process, getting you to deposit, and getting you through orientation. They don't want you to leave September 1st when school starts. Um, They're they're gonna work with you. Um, But on the other hand, they are a business and they need to make money to stay in business. So they do want your money. I think the most important thing is, you know, if you've missed the deadline date for the bill, contact the school. Each school has a different name for it. It's either the bursar's office or the student accounts office, the cashier's office. whoever on campus is collecting the bill, just let them know you're aware of it, you're working on it, maybe get an extension, find out when they're gonna start to impose late fees Mm. and what those late fees are so you know how urgent it is to get it resolved. Gotcha, so what I'm hearing from you is that you can't ignore your bills and hope that they'll (laughs) just miss you. Even in a school of 60,000 people, probably not feasible. Correct. All right, so you gotta pay our college bills. now. I think if it's something that I've just overlooked, you know, there've been a couple of instances where I've forgotten to pay bills and I was, oh my gosh, I missed the deadline. I'll reach out. It's like, I, I got the money. I'll just let me send it over to you and it's no problem. But I think that there are potentially some circumstances where things could be different for a family where they might say, you know, circumstances have changed for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about financial aid at this stage? What, what can families do? Is it too late once you've arrived on campus and the semester has essentially started for you to get some more funding? So it may not be too late. Um, I think it's worth a reach out to the financial aid office. If you've already applied and received some aid, but it's not enough, go back and ask for more, explain why you might need more, what circumstances might have changed. And this year there is COVID money, money from Mm -hmm. the government that was issued to college financial aid offices to give to those families who had unique circumstances. You know, the family was affected by COVID some way financially and the student needs additional funding. So if that's your case, definitely go back and ask for that. Um, The other thing to make sure is that they have applied all of your financial aid to the bill. You know, ask them to sit down with you and go over line by line, did that scholarship hit the bill? Did that grant, did this full student loan, is that being deducted? You know, mistakes can happen. So make sure that everything's been applied as a deduction to your bill before you assume that you owe all of it. Can I ask you a quick question there? Sometimes work study is folded into a financial aid package. Now, do they predict what that work study money will be for that student over the course of the year and apply that to the bill at the beginning? Or is that something that accrues and then gets goes toward the bill later on? Both are incorrect. It is <laughs> the <That's> work study. <laughs> why I'm not the expert. <laughs> the work study money is not applied to the bill at all. Okay. It is paid to the student in a paycheck. Okay. 
Gotcha. So that you don't get any of the money until you've earned it, until you've worked the hours and received a paycheck. And the money, again, goes to the student in a paycheck so that they can buy their books or maybe a bus pass or maybe go to the movies or whatever expenses okay. they have. So it generally um, will, will kind of cover these additional supplemental expenses that are associated mm-hmm. with college, but are not directly a- attached to tuition and room and board and fees. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now, if I'm a parent, how do I get that money from my kid? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Make Good sure question. that comes straight to my bank account. <laughs> right. um, now, let's say that you've still got a balance. You've requested aid. You um, have done what you can to pay, but you're still in a position where there is a gap. Uh, what do you do at this point? Um, as you've said, we don't, we don't want to, as admission professionals and, and college uh, officials, we don't want to send students home. So what are some options that you have at this, this point? So you could try to work with the school to come up with a payment plan. Mm. Uh, Majority of colleges have a payment plan. At this point in time, it being September, it's a little late to join a payment plan, but they may make exceptions. Um, They might charge you a little fee to join the payment plan, um, but they won't charge you any interest on the outstanding balance. And that might give you, you know, the first payment might be due in October, and then you have to pay November and December, but get caught up before the semester ends. I think the important thing is that if you don't pay the bill and the semester ends, the student is not going to be able to register for spring semester classes if they have an outstanding bill. So that really is the drop dead date of um, when you have to have it resolved, because otherwise they won't be able to continue as a student and register for the future. And that sort of is the mechanism that colleges have in place is Mm -hmm. their recourse is to say, well, we're not going to let you register. We're going to lock you out of the system until Mm -hmm. that bill is paid. And that usually gets the attention of the student. I would imagine if all these (laughs) emails aren't working, when when I can't register, that's the issue. Uh, Now accruing interest, um, that's something that you said, if you get on a payment plan, you might be able to avoid that. Um, but what happens if you're in a position where there is that gap, you're not on a payment plan because it's not available to you or you elected not to do so. Mm -hmm. And we're going through months of time where there's money owed. What does that look like in terms of uh, interest? Well, so I think the other part of the interest that I want to talk about before I forget is that the loans that are available, we haven't talked about, there are loans that you could borrow. I mean, yeah. maybe at this point you've decided you don't qualify or that's not the plan you want to take, but there are several different loans from different sources that you could borrow, private loans, federal loans. If the parents um, have a problem with their credit history and they can't borrow because of their credit history, they could try for a parent plus loan and get denied. I've met many families who go through the process just to get denied so the student can borrow more on their student loan. Hmm. So there is a mechanism in the federal student loan program that if the parents can't borrow, the student can get an additional $4,000 a year. It's hmm. not a lot, but sometimes it will fill that gap. Fill that gap. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing to think of is, you know, what is your credit situation? Can you borrow? And if it's not you, there are other loans that the student can take with a co-signer doesn't have to be mom or dad, could be an aunt or uncle or grandparent, if the family is willing to help out to, to get that loan in place to cover the balance. But again, they are all accruing interest while the student's in school and during repayment. What is the interest typically that, that colleges charge on outstanding balances and how does that square up with uh, loan interest? So I, I did some checking before today and some of them, it's like a flat fee, $150 fine for a past due balance, which depending on how much you owe could be pretty excessive. Yeah. Um, so I've mostly seen more of a, a fee than a percentage. Gotcha. And gotcha. it could be every month, you know, $20 a month added on as each month goes by that you have a balance. Gotcha. And so that would be true, even if the balance is $75. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, that's a lot. That's a hefty chunk of the percentage. Right. Um, if it's right. thousands, you probably want to look into these loan options because it's going to be a much larger amount of money that you have to scrape together. Right. Um, what, any other just uh, thoughts or, or advice that, that you have for families that get into these circumstances? I mean, this sounds really stressful. Uh, you know, it sounds like something where it's like you're moving in, you're excited, the student's starting their first week of classes and you've got this outstanding balance. And if it mm-hmm. is as easy as writing a check, then great. But like for a lot of families, that's probably not the reality. Right. What other advice would you give in this, in this circumstance? Well, I think it increases the stress, but if you are going to make a decision to leave the school, 
to to say, okay, we made the wrong decision. We can't afford this, and we need to go to Plan B, whether that's community college or taking a semester off. You need to do it quickly because every day that you're in school, you're still accruing a balance. And most of the refund programs that the schools offer after the first week, you don't get a full refund. So you could leave, but still owe money for those first two weeks of school. And that'd be really difficult Mm -hmm. uh, to think about uh, leaving the school and then still paying them uh, Mm -hmm. in that bill. Um, And then do schools have sort of recourse that are, that is attached to uh, credit history for parents or, or even for students, if they are not able to pay back this balance in a timely fashion? Yes, it can be sent to a collections agency and that would hit your credit score. That's terrible. That would, that's no fun, right? So we want to, we want to try and avoid these circumstances. Now, Mm -hmm. of course, there's so much that you can do in advance of this circumstance in order to first calculate your net price with an EFC calculator, and then look at schools that offer scholarships and assess these financial aid packages. Lori, what, if people are listening to our show and they, they obviously get great advice from us every week and, and from our, our great finance experts, um, where are some other places that people can go if they want more um, support or advice? I mean, this, this sounds so complicated to me to be able to be aware of all of the ins and outs of this, the plus loan deny to get $4,000 more is like, seems like a very niche piece of expertise to have. Mm-hmm. Um, where else can people go to sort of be uh, aware of this? I would look for some community organizations within your community. Um, uh, for, I'm in Worcester, Massachusetts, and we have the Greater Worcester Community Foundation, which has experts who can help you on the financial aid process and financial funding for college. Uh, the financial aid office at the school, you know, you're their customer. They're, they're going to help you because, again, you've gotten to this point, they want you to be able to afford it and not have a past due balance. So, so they're a good resource. I think your high school counseling office would be a, a resource as well. That's great. I appreciate that, Lori. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and, and talking us through all of this. Uh, kind of a difficult scenario, but it sounds like there are some good pathways out of it. So yeah. appreciate that. All right. My pleasure. All right, folks. When we uh, are back next week, we'll have Beth hosting the show once again. We're going to talk about applying to visual arts and fine arts programs. So if you are a creative minded student who's thinking about pursuing that in college, you won't want to miss that segment. Uh, We're also going to be talking about some supplemental essays. Yeah, it's time to start thinking about those. You finish the personal statement and onto some supplemental pieces. And the age-old question, which Lori, I imagine you could answer, but we're going to have Alex on to talk about it. Uh, FAFSA, to file or not to file? That is the question. Uh, Until that time, please enjoy the start of September. Good luck to all you seniors who are starting to get into the middle of your college application writing process. And we will look forward to joining you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.